Hey there, Gavin Gear here from UltimateReloader.com. If you have been watching my 224 Valkyrie content, you've seen me chronicle my journey building this Remington 700 Custom 224 Valkyrie rifle. And as a part of that rifle build, I installed the KRG Bravo stock and the Trigger Tech Special Trigger for the Remington 700. Trigger Tech advertises their triggers as having zero creep, and this trigger has a one pound to three and a half pound pull weight adjustment range, which is really great. Now, so far I've had the trigger out at 100 yards to do my barrel break in and to do some of my load development. And I've also had it out at 400 and 600 yards and I will be taking the rifle out to beyond 1,000 yards. Still working on the loads and still scheduling some range time for that. In this video, what I wanna do is take my sort of qualitative understanding of the trigger. It feels great, it works great, but I want to back that up with some quantitative data. And good thing for me, I have the world's most advanced trigger profiling system, the trigger scan. What does this device do? Well, it has a motorized load cell and it's able to map out and graph force versus distance. It's gonna show us all the key characteristics of a trigger, the take up, the creep, the break, the over travel and so on and so forth. We're gonna get a peak pull weight and we're gonna see in a picture, a graph on this computer, what the performance of the trigger really is and I'm gonna go at the minimum range for pull weight, the maximum range, I'm gonna cut that in half in clicks, this trigger just with clicks to get a value in the middle so that we can see as we vary the trigger pull weight, how the characteristics of the trigger change. So let's get to work. So what I found in running the trigger tech special on the trigger scan uh, with the rifle, this was the first time I put a rifle in the trigger scan, was just how critical some of the details are with the different supports, the fixtures, and, and the adjustments to get the rifle completely settled in so that you don't get erroneous readings. And the first full set of results I had to kind of throw out. And once I honed in on those critical areas, I was able to get really consistent results. And here's what I found. There's about 44 clicks between minimum and maximum pull weight settings on the Trigger Tech Special. So what I did is I backed it all the way off, plus one click to get the minimum value. And then I went about 22 clicks in to get the middle pull weight range setting. And then all the way until it stopped, very gently of course, to get the maximum pull weight. And let me show you what I got. So here we see the trigger scan results for minimum, middle, and maximum trigger pull weight settings. And we can see the peak force is about three and a quarter pounds for maximum. So that's close to the approximate three and a half pound maximum weight advertised. In the middle, we were pretty much right at two. And then at minimum, we were right just barely over one pound. You can see 1.015, 1.064, 1.050 1 pounds. And the initial take up was measured at zero. On, on all of them and that's pretty consistent with how the trigger feels. You put your finger on it and it's ready to roll. It's interesting here, the sort of area where the creep would be, the actuation distance is very small because this is 10 thousandths of an inch total, this first section here. And so you can see it's probably about 5 thousandths of an inch that your finger is moving before the trigger break sequence is initiated. Very clean, very consistent results, and the profile looks a little bit different than with a conventional trigger where you've got the sear sliding. And in this case, we've got a roller there that acts just a little bit different. That helps remove some of the friction, but I think it changes the characteristics of the trigger break just a little bit. So in terms of the range, everything was consistent. And if you look at sort of the actuation, the the initial application of force, it's extremely consistent and really the pull weight adjustment just is, is basically changing where the trigger break occurs on the, in terms of the force range. So interesting results and it shows how good this trigger performs really. So I thought it would be interesting to take a look at another trigger and kind of compare the trigger scan results to kind of put what we saw with the trigger scan in perspective. So I put my Winchester Model 70 Heavy Varmint here on the trigger scan device 
And this has a rifle basics trigger I upgraded years ago. It runs good, I run it at about a pound. And I wanted to run at one pull weight setting, three successive trigger scans so that we can see kind of how the overall profile of the trigger scan will compare to the trigger tech special. So here's what we have. And we can see we're just under a pound of peak force. And, and overall the profile looks somewhat similar. And one big difference, however, is the, the shape of the profile. This is kind of a more rounded profile. Whereas with the Trigger Tech Special, we saw the force increase and then it plateau for a very short distance and then the trigger breaks. So my takeaway is both triggers perform well and similar in terms of characteristics. But what's nice about the Trigger Tech Special is it has just a little bit more of a defined feel as we go throughout that force distance graph and we look at the characteristics of what the trigger will actually feel like and actually perform like. So that's a fair bit of information to take in, but we've seen how well this Trigger Tech Special trigger does, and at about $200 street price, this trigger is an excellent value. And if you want more information, I would definitely encourage you to click on that first link in the video description to read the full write-up for this particular story. And if you liked this video, please give it a thumbs up, and if you don't wanna miss any of the action here on GavinTube, please subscribe to my channel. Until next time, Happy shooting and happy reloading.